This is the table saw that I'm replacing, and it's even with my bench that I use as a cutoff table. They're both 36 inches, but the saw stop is 34 inches off the floor, so I'll have to raise it up a couple inches. The mobile base adds one quarter inch height, so I made another one and three quarter inch by gluing together three pieces of plywood. Rounded this with a three eighths inch round over bit so that it would fit into the curve there. And this fits in there. Here's the saw stripped down in order to get it through the standard door into the shop. So the fence rails are removed. The motor cover over here is removed. This handle was removed as well. My old contractor saw has a table that's 24 inches wide. Saw stop is the same. So that's not really taking any more space. 22 inches deep. This saw is 30 inches front to back on the table, which is a big improvement. So I'm going to cut one foot off of each rail, and that'll change it from a 36 inch maximum cut to a 24 inch maximum cut, which is more than enough for the type of work I do. And over on the left side of the table, I'm going to cut both these rails off flush with the table. I've got a 10 inch abrasive metal cutoff wheel in the chop saw. That was $15 in Canada. This is a good time to wear your ear and eye protection. Uh, I had to come in from both sides to make it work and so there's not perfectly even there. The next time I'll try it uh, down this way. Okay, that was faster and a cleaner cut. Round off that same profile. I'll cut off a bit of this tape from the ends just so we have a cleaner finish. I cleaned these with methyl hydrate and now I'm putting on a red oxide metal primer. This is the area where the paint got overheated. So I uh, sanded it with 400 grit sandpaper. Because the motor hangs out the back, it has to be 35 or 36 inches from the rail to the bench. There's 36 inches from the bench to the edge of the rail, and that's the same as the old saw, so it's not taking up any more space in my working area, but I've got a much bigger table. To scale the saw down for my smaller shop, I opted to not install the left-hand wing. Don't find that much use. And also I like it when I'm pushing a piece of wood through to be able to come around the side of the table to continue guiding it sometimes. So good to not have that wing from my point of view. The right hand wing on the other hand is useful for supporting wide panels. This model of saw stop called the ICS is the only version where the motor projects out the right hand side. And from a floor space point of view that's ideal for me because I'm already using the floor space with the right hand wing so the motor coming out there doesn't cost me anything. The other models, the motor comes out the left hand side and as I mentioned I'm not using the left hand wing so that would waste floor space or the motor projects out the back which then I don't get as deep a run on the cast iron table. With the right hand wing pushed up close to the dust collection system the farthest I can move my fence to the right is here which gives me a maximum cutting width of 9 inches 
with the saw in this position and a long board being run off the jointer, I still clear the rails. That's why I had to cut one foot off of them. This will be the normal position of the saw, pushed up close to the dust collector, so that I have lots of working room around. I highly recommend this mobile base. It makes it so easy to move the saw, which is something I have to do every time I want to cut something wider than 9 inches. I made this lightweight box that I can rest on the back rail of the table saw clamp in the leg vise and that gives me a wider cutoff table when I need it. I bolted this wooden block to the right hand wing so that when the fence is moved to its maximum 24 and a half inch cut it's supported by the block and doesn't drop off the end. The saw weighs twice as much as a large refrigerator so if you got a suspended wooden floor like I do consider where you're locating it. I have a main beam that runs this way underneath the floor and a steel post in the middle of the floor. So I've got good support in that regard. I've tried a lot of different arrangements of the power tools in the shop over the years and what I've found is that placing the planer, the jointer and the table saw in an island in the center of the shop works best for me. And I've wrapped those around a dust collecting system which I'm building so that I can have short hoses going to all the machines. By cutting down the new table saw to fit in my smaller shop, I was able to get it in the same floor footprint as the old table saw. I haven't lost any space around here. And yet I've got a much bigger table, 8 inches deeper and 10 inches wider with the wing installed. So that's a great improvement without sacrificing any space. And of course it's a much higher quality saw and a safer saw.